To the Royal Rumble continues to heat up as we bring the chaos to Orlando, Florida. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Monday Night Carnage. And we are not wasting any time as this is the first of three Royal Rumble qualifying matches this evening. Entering first is the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus. His opponent at the time is currently unknown, but that hasn't stopped the former tag team champion before, including his run in the Rumble match itself. One time winner in 2012, last eliminating Chris Jericho, and you have to believe he wants one more shot to do it all over again. This is our first time seeing Sheamus since he lost a no disqualification match against former tag team partner and current Intercontinental Champion Cesaro a couple of months ago on the now defunct Smackdown, but he needs to put that behind him and look forward, which I'm sure he will. What a night we have, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the first of three Rumble qualifiers. The other two will involve Cassius Ono and the Rebellion's Wade Barrett in their respective matches. Also tonight, we will roll the footage of the exclusive interview of Rusev and Lana after they reunited, and they were asked to arrive earlier today to prevent further conflict with the Rebellion. And then we take a look back at Finn Balor's tumultuous road to the Royal Rumble. So much in store, ladies and gentlemen. And now the question remains, who will be the foe that Sheamus will have to overcome in order to qualify for the Royal Rumble match? Oh, and it appears that Sheamus is in for quite the fight because here comes Mr. Career Killer himself, former WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Big. E. Langston. Big E has a history in the Rumble it's himself, most notably when he was a member of the New Day. And speaking of that iconic group, I'm sure Big E heard what MVP said last week as he wasn't in the building. Bobby Lashley was the man who took out Xavier Woods in the parking garage in Vegas 
after Joker's Wild. And ironically, none of the members of BDC are in the building tonight. So Biggie is just a, has built up rage. He has been on edge ever since he came within an inch of becoming WWE World Heavyweight Champion after laying out Ricochet with the big ending at Joker's Wild. But Apollo Crews took advantage and left Vegas with the goal by the skin of his teeth. So far, Adam Cole, Killian Dane, and Daniel Bryan of the Rebellion has qualified for the Rumble. Which one of these two bulls will join the fray? As Langston just pacing back and forth, ready for the bell to ring so he can get unleashed the anger that he has pent up in store over the last two weeks that he just had. It's Sheamus, Langston, Royal Rumble qualifying match. The rule is still there, win and you're in, lose and you're not. Who's winning this certified hoss fight? Let me know and let's get it on. Oh, and Sheamus connects with a knee. Sheamus not wasting any time. He's not playing around with the ton and he's just going up and ready for a fight. Now he's stomping the back of the head. Oh my God. That was a little bit more stiff this go around. And another leap beneath from Sheamus. Hold on, close fist. Luckily, Big E is blocking him on oh, stump to the stomach. He is just soaking in the disdain that this sold out crowd here in Orlando has towards him as he hopes to, to somehow dispatch of an angry Big E Langston and qualify for the Royal Rumble match. Big E fight away to get out of there, and Big E belly to belly overthrow suplex. Like I said, he hasn't been in any good mood. He was within an inch of becoming WWE World Heavyweight Champion until Apollo took advantage. And then he heard, he had to hear what Bobby Lashley said. He was the man who took out his once upon a time tag team partner, Xavier Woods. A man that he has slowly grown to call a friend once again ever since the brand split was abolished when the company went over last September, November. Oh, and Big E with a knee. So Big E has a lot to unleash on this night. And a shoulder tackle. And Sheamus is just a casualty. Sheamus is just an unintentional target. But you know Big E don't mind. Oh, what a, what a lariat. Just took his head clean off. Sheamus smart to roll to the ring. This is the first of three qualifying matches for the Royal Rumble. The other two will involve Cassius Ono and Wade Barrett of the Rebellion. So you already know we are in for one hell of a night. Uh oh, Sheamus. Sheamus in trouble. Big E scooped him up. Dead lift into the jerk to, to the vertical suplex. Uh oh. And another belly to belly overthrow suplex. Big E is feeling it right now. He is on a mission. Oh my gosh. What a kick to the face. Uh oh. Uh oh, we know what's next. We know what's next. He's about to hit that big splash. That big splash. Will this be enough to put Sheamus away? And Big E qualified for the Rumble? No, only a two. He's going to have to do something. Oh, wait, Sheamus, he saw, he had a scout. Oh, my God. Now Sheamus, once again, unleashing those close fists to the face. But Big E was able to block it, but not able to block that midsection strike. Oh my, what a headbutt. This crowd just showering Sheamus in their disdain. That Sheamus just hangs Big E up the top rope. Sends him into the corner. What a slugfest this has been. Uh-oh, you know what's next? Snake eyes. And now Big E in trouble with the backbreaker by Sheamus. God. The elbow to the back of the head. Big E tried to roll out of the way, but he wasn't quick enough. As Sheamus, Sheamus is running like a, oh my God, he knows he's in a fight at this point. He, so he's gonna have to bring out all he can. The beast of the Bodrum repeated forearm clubs to the chest. 10 forearm clubs to the chest. And Sheamus is just enjoying the hate that this sold out crowd has towards him. 
Jessica Carr count him, will be able to count both men out. If neither one can make it in at the count of 10, they both will not be able to qualify for the Royal Rumble match. Oh, and a big boot. A big boot to the side of the head. So far, Adam Cole, Killian Dane, and Daniel Bryan have qualified for the Rumble. And it looks like it appears that Big E has been busted open. He got a cut over his forehead. I'm pretty sure that was from that boot. Oh, my God. Yep, he is tasting blood. Sheamus sees blood, and he is going to feast on the blood as he rains down left and right. Closed fist to, the, to that open wound. Big E in serious trouble. Now Seamus, oh my, those exposed elbows to the side of the jaw, to the temple. That can knock a normal man out, but Big E is probably dazed at this point. Sends him into the corner. What is Seamus doing? Seamus running like a truck towards E. Sit down! Like a bull seeing red, he tastes his own blood. Big E is on a different level right now as he forced Sheamus to sit down. And now, deadlift into the back body drop. Uh-oh. Big E stalking Sheamus. Spear! You know he was thinking about Bobby Lashley. That's a move. Whoa. Did, did he just shout out New Day? Biggie, shout out New Day with his injured tag team partners, former tag team partners, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston on the shelf due to re respective attacks, courtesy of the Beatdown Corporation. You already know he's in a move. Fall away slam. You can tell Biggie was thinking of Bobby Lashley with that spear. And now. He is in quite the fighting mode with that blood dripping down his face, getting into his eyes and getting into his mouth. He is unleashing his rage that he has been built up for weeks ever since he lost his opportunity to become WWE World Heavyweight Champion when Apollo practically stole the title from him. And now, oh, and a leap, lipping knee from Big E. And the title wave splash. The title way sl splash is always a prelude to this stalking his prey. Big E, Big E, host him up. Big ending, big ending, and Big E is headed towards the Royal Rumble match with the victory over Sheamus. What a war. What a fight between two incredible athletes. But the playing field just got inter interesting when it comes to the Royal Rumble. The blood dripping from his face is all the proof you need when it comes to the importance of the Royal Rumble match. You can't take anything away from Sheamus. He was in this fight to win just like the victor. But it was the blood that woke something in the former WWE World Champion. A sickening spear as a message to Bobby Lashley. And then another title away splash, which was a prelude to the big ending to put an end to Sheamus' hopes of entering the Royal Rumble match this year. Joining Adam Cole, Killian Dane, and Daniel Bryan, Big E Langston is now one of 30 men who will look to leave Tokyo as number one contender, but who will join the other two as still to come tonight. Cash is on and the Rebellion's Wade Barrett will compete in Rumble qualifying matches respectively. But just like Sheamus, no one knows who their opponents will be, which the cabinet is being tight-lipped on in regards to that information. Also, we will look back at Finn Balor's road to the Royal Rumble as he continues to prepare for his upcoming WWE World Championship match in the Tokyo Dome. Plus, as I mentioned, we will air the footage of the exclusive interview we conducted with Rusev and Lana, who were asked to show up to the arena early to prevent further conflict with the Rebellion. And wait a minute. No, oh, Big E. Oh, he's cutting off.
message clear. Big E is coming for Bobby Lesley. He hopes he qualifies for the Rumble, but then again, he might not because they don't call him Mr. Career Killer for nothing. Big E is livid. As I said, he wants Bobby Lashley and he wants him back. Wow, what an announcement. The women's ranking system will be frozen until after the Royal Rumble, and we will have showcase matches of sorts to impress Lacey in regards to determining the other 11 participants in the women's Rumble match. Four men have already qualified for the men's Rumble match. Will the knockout artist add his name to the list just like Sheamus? Cassius Ono is walking into battle with an unknown adversary, but I highly doubt He's sweating that because he's been in his fair share of wars to say the very least. The last time we saw Ono was back at Survivor Series when he was involved in the gauntlet match to crown the new world television champion, which is currently held by the Rebellion's Zack Ryder. So he knows he needs to win to be in the Royal Rumble just like that. But did you see the passion pouring from Big E Langston? He's hell bent on getting payback on Bobby Lashley for what he did to Xavier Woods last month in Vegas. As well as tonight on this show, we will see a showcase match involving the women's division. It's not qualifying matches, just to a way to impress management, most specifically Lacey Evans, the official consultant. What a night we have in store, and we haven't even hit the 30-minute mark yet. But who is Ono's opponent? We'll find out in just a heartbeat. Oh, this is a surprise? Okay. We haven't seen this individual since last summer when he was taken out backstage by the Rebellion's Aleister Black, which placed him on the shelf indefinitely with a serious neck injury. But he's back. He is the Lone Wolf. He is Baron Corbin. Corbin would like nothing more than to return to the Rumble. Having had his fair share of eliminations in the match at a total seven combined. And just like Adam Cole, Killian Dane, Daniel Bryan, and Big E Langston, if he wants in the match this year, he needs to qualify. And in order to do that, he must get past one of the kings of wrestling in Cassius Ono, who has never, to my knowledge, entered a Royal Rumble match himself. All that can change in just a moment if he get past the apparently focused two-time amateur Golden Gloves regional champion. In a way, this is a match made in heaven because Ono has multiple ways of knocking you out. And Corbin has his fist, which he never, to my knowledge, wraps when he comes to the ring. This might be a slugfest, to say the very least, as this sold-out crowd here in Orlando showers Corbin with their opinions, an opinion that he doesn't really care to take, just being honest with you. It is oh no, it is Corbin. Win and you're in, lose and you're out. Jessica is the official for this one and here we go, the second of three Royal Rumble qualifying matches and Corbin is quick to play mind games, going to catch a breather to take his time. As I said, Jessica Carr is your official for this one. You win and you're in, you lose and you're not. Simple. At the count of three, and Corbin once again. It looks like Oh No is taking, is not really going to play that mind games. He's a veteran of the game, but Corbin looking to take advantage of this as he takes, this, takes him down with a shoulder tackle. Justin Carr tried to hold Oh No back, but that went against Oh No to say the very least. That was the opportunity, the opening that. Baron Corbin needed as he sends Ono into the corner. Big E Langston have already qualified it tonight. Oh, what a shot to the face and a second shot. And now, uh oh, 
Oh no, reverse, but he did he's not expecting this truck to return. Corbin like a truck ran over Oh no with that Lariat. As I said, Biggie Langston has already qualified on tonight. Wade Barrett still has an opportunity to do later on tonight. Will Ono or Baron Corbin make that same, the same trip as Ono plants him in the corner and sends him crashing to the mat and a kick to the spine that will send that tingling sensation up and down your neck. Uh oh, oh, what a drop kick and a kip up. The knockout artist is feeling different. You don't have time to uh, please this crowd. You have to stay on them if you want to qualify for the Royal Rumble match. And what an announcement as oh no, looks to put this one away early, only a one. And what an announcement by Lacey Evans. The women's ranking system will be frozen. The numbers two through 10 will be officially entered into the women's Royal Rumble match, the 20 women Royal Rumble match with the last remaining 11 being determined all they have to do is impress her, to say the very least, as this match is sure to impress. Knife best shot by Cassius Ono. Corbin is in trouble. And now Ono, uh oh, smart strategy right here. Target the knee to keep the big man down. Even though they're the same size, Ono is a wrestling genius. He will play games, he will, he will, know, he knows how to Tear your body apart. Can't even get my words out, but I know what Ono can get out right here. Standing moon soft from the second rope. Looking to put this one away right here. Smart strategy two and three. No. Ono's chances of qualifying for the Royal Rumble has been slightly delayed. I have just received word that the scheduled match for tonight's showcase will see Mandy Rose go one on one with Kyrie Sane. That is an interesting matchup as Sane is already in the women's Royal Rumble match. Senton as Cassius Ono connects while an impressive showing from Mandy could place her as one of the 11 participants that have yet to be announced. Oh, and speaking of impressive, oh, what a neck breaker by Ono. Ono is on a roll right now. He wants to make sure that he qualifies for the men's Royal Rumble. Oh, what? Was that a two? That was barely a three. That was a 2.9, if you want to be honest. And Ono, he's going to have to stay on him. He's going to have to stay on him, and he's about to with a net breaker, a swinging net breaker. Uh oh, Corbin's in trouble. Oh, my God. Will Corbin tap right here as Ono stretches him back. The referee in perfect position right here. Oh, wait. The power of Corbin. He slipped out. And now a shoulder tackle as he shakes the cobwebs of being stretched like that. The body should not be stretched like that in any way, shape, or form. Oh, and now Corbin. Oh, what a close shot. Like I said, he got to watch out for the fist. That fist alone can knock you out. Corbin sends him into the corner. And now Corpse scoops him up. Snake Eyes in the corner. Uh oh, Corbin. Go Corbin. Oh, he went for a shoulder tackle. But Ono caught him in midair. And a bicycle kick by the knockout artist. If Ono hasn't knocked out Corbin, this might set time. Corbin's in trouble. What a boot. What a big boot. And now, oh, what an elbow drop with some flavor on. And now, oh no. Targeting the slightly, the slightly agitated neck as he torqued his neck in a place that it shouldn't be torqued by any other person. Oh, what a shot. What an elbow. He always uses to set it up. Corbin is out like a light. Like a light. And now he's about to make sure that it stay that way. Oh no. Oh, oh no was going for something, but Corbin countered. And now oh no is about to meet his end of days. End of days. Baron Corbin has defeated Cassius Ono and is headed to the Royal Rumble match. 
His first match back was a success as Corbin knows he was in a battle with Ono and Cassius Ono shouldn't hold his head down because he gave it everything he had and then some including that where I thought Corbin was done for but the Lone Wolf was able to power out and the near fall and then but this right here that moonsault I thought it was it as well as this net breaker and then this right here this beautiful forearm was able to knock Corbin out for the time being, but Corbin was able to give him his end of days. And once he hits that, it signals, pun intended, the end. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's take you back to last year's King of the Ring event where Biggie Langston challenged for the World Heavyweight Championship against a focused and determined Demon King in Finn Balor. Let's roll that footage in the production truck. Personal.
MVP, the CEO of BDC, with a strong message on behalf of WWE World Heavyweight Champion Apollo Crews, directed towards the challenger, Finn Balor. That message was directed towards Finn Balor, but I wonder what demographic is this man aiming towards? The former NXT North American Champion, the Velveteen Dream. He's not on my rundown sheet, but he's here in the... Wait a minute. Tommaso Ciampa, he's back! Ciampa with an attack on Velveteen. This is the first time we've seen Ciampa since that brutal, unsanctioned match last month against Sammy Callahan. Oh, Ciampa. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Dream in trouble. Project Ciampa! Champa wants in the Royal Rumble match, and he's demanding that the cabinet make it happen. Uh-oh. Dream ain't done, suffering pain. Oh my God! Tommaso Champa just tossed Dream off the stage. Well. Oh well, let's move on.
Wow, what an interview that was. Rusev felt betrayed by the rebellion and he is focused on Daniel Bryan and The Rock. But let's shift our focus to the next match, which is basically a showcase match, if you will, as Mandy Rose prepares for a match against arguably one of the best wrestlers in the world today. But I can tell you she is determined herself to prove that she can hang with the best of them and why she should be in the 20 woman over the top rope Royal Rumble match. And that woman is the Pirate Princess, former nine time champion in various promotions, Kyrie Sane. As I mentioned, she was champion in other promotions. She would like nothing more than to guarantee her shot at the Women's Championship at WrestleMania, whomever that, that beat may be when we reach the showcase of the Immortals. But in order for that to happen, she must survive 19 other women. If you missed it, Lacey Evans informed us that the women's ranking system has been frozen until after the Royal Rumble with number two through 10 automatically being granted entry into the battlefield. An impressive showing from Sane's opponent could very well place her in that match. She doesn't have to exactly win, she just has to impress the official consultant. Sane noticeably wearing a Hannah Kimura shirt. May she continue to rest in peace and may we as people continue to work towards being kind to one another as we continue to navigate life to the best of our abilities. Guarantee that both of these women will be bringing their best in just a matter of moments as Kyrie Sane continues to greet her fellow mates, if you will, as she is quite the genuine human being that you can get behind. Kyrie Sane focus on the Royal Rumble and she can consider this a warm-up match but Mandy Rose will not be a pushover if you want to be honest because it is God's greatest creation versus the pirate princess Rose Sane and we are underway as Lacey Evans keeps a close eye on this very match elbow collar tie up as both women want to be jockeying for position but Sane with the headlock control right there and she switches over to the arm which is smart strategy because you take out that that sit out face buster a little bit if you wear that down but Mandy Rose found a way to get out of it and now Sane looking to brush her off sends her off the rope ducks out of the way oh what a drop kick beautiful beautiful drop kick referee Mike Kyoto is your official for this one Jessica Carr takes the first half and Mike Kyoto takes the remainder of the show Sane connects with that arm drag and now Sane is feeling it What is Sane going for? Oh, what a net breaker. A net breaker. That, will this be it? Early on, two, only a one. Smart. Smart. Rose is going to do a lot. She's going to impress everyone, most specifically Lacey Evans. And Sane connects with that vertical suplex. So far in the Royal Rumble, the top two through ten have already been selected Kyrie Sane is already in the Royal Rumble the likes of Sasha Banks Oscar are already in the Royal Rumble match 11 to be determined at a later date but as Sane was going for that body splash Mandy Rose quickly got out of the way because she wants to make sure that she is one of the 11 oh what disrespect Rose with no respect towards Kyrie Sane with that open hand slap I'm pretty sure Sane won't like that once she gets her wits about her. Rose, oh, what a forearm into the corner. Mandy Rose comes off as smug and arrogant. Some people like that, some people don't, but she doesn't really care as long as she gets the job done in the center of that ring as she connected with that forearm and another forearm in the corner. Oh, Rose is going for something, but Kyrie Sane fought her off. Oh, what a double axe face smash. I guess that's the name for it. But let's move on. As I'm sure Sane wants to move on, but Mandy Rose with that form. And now, what a Russian leg sweep. Rose is feeling, feeling it. She want, like I said, she, she is everything to gain and nothing to lose because if she impresses Lacey Evans well enough, she can be one of 20 in the Royal Rumble match for the women. Because who doesn't want to be on the bright lights 
of, to of the Tokyo Dome. Our first major event ever since returning to operations last November. Oh, what a shot to the spine. And now Rose, oh, Rose has something in mind, but the, the, she took her down, out by the legs, and now Luthes press with those repeated shots to the face. Zane wants to make sure you know she's here to play, she's here to fight, and she is here to fight hard. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we all know what this is. Zane setting up oh what an elbow rose is in trouble rose it wait a minute is that that's oscar we haven't seen the former women's champion since her loss to rhea ripley last month in vegas but what is she doing here saying trying to brush her off but she can't help but notice oscar who is just watching on Looks like she gave her a nod, but oh no, Mandy Rose taking advantage of that distraction. Mandy Rose taking advantage of, oh no, oh what a planter face first. Rose knows she's in for a fight. And now she wants to make sure that she heads to the rumble. Get to the midsection. Oh Rose, sit out face buster. The sit out face buster, here's the cover. Two and three. No, Rose thought she was gonna pick up the win over Kyrie Sane here. The Sane fought out of it. Oh, she snaps it down. Kick to the spine. Kicking out, probably pissed off Mandy Rose, which I don't blame her. Block that forearm attempt. Double axe and a death press again. It seems that the appearance of Oscar has changed something in Kyrie Sane. Sane is now in her comfort zone. And now, insane elbow. That's it. That's it. But Sane is not done. Oh, kick to the midsection. Oh, no. She calls this the anchor. She calls this the anchor. And Mandy Rose taps out to the anchor as Kyrie Sane picks up the win. If Lacey Evans wasn't impressed with Mandy Rose, I don't know what to tell you because even though she lost, she stayed in the fight. And she gave her best to the Pirate Princess. She gave her absolute best. I thought she was done with that sit-out face buster, but it seems like the arrival of Asuka sparked something in her long enough that being Kyrie Sane to kick out of that fury of offense by Mandy Rose. First Rose was, took advantage of this distraction right here as she took her down the hard way from the top, planted her face and gut first, and then hit the sit out face buster. Oscar's appearance sparked something in Kyrie Sane long enough for her to kick out of the sit out face buster by Rose and long enough to connect with the insane elbow and picked up the win with the anchor submission. Kyrie Sane is already in the Royal Rumble, and this is if, if this is what's to come when it comes to these showcase matches en route to the Royal Rumble, inject it into my veins. But what is this with Asuka? For those who don't know, Kyrie was one of the two individuals who once aided the Empress in retaining her women's championship last September over Sasha Banks at Ground Zero. But that was quietly subdued. Are they running it back or what? This is a confusing situation, but what the? Apologies to Kyrie Sane, but apparently we have to move on because joining us now is the order led by the self-proclaimed antichrist of professional wrestling and former intercontinental champion, the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy. Interestingly enough, Hardy, along with Seth Rollins and the Toa Man himself, Karrion Cross, has had quite the interesting past two weeks, including Rollins interrupting the anticipated championship match between Cesaro and Keith Lee, which led to Hardy giving the IC champ a concussion two weeks ago before Keith Lee looked to return the favor last week. 
with an impromptu main event involving Lee and the former WWE World Champion Seth Rollins, which Lee shot Rollins when he brushed off the blackout stump and caught Rollins mid-air into a sickening spirit bomb to pick up the win. Hardy and Cross, however, made sure Lee knew that this mysterious group meant business when Cross laid him out with the Saito suplex before Hardy connected with the twist of hate. The entire order is not in attendance, however, as Scarlet is probably away doing something quite evil, but apparently Hardy has something to address, possibly in regards to him invoking his rematch clause for the Intercontinental title that is still pending. No official announcement has been made by the cabinet, that being William Regal, the chief of staff, or Paul Heyman, the commissioner. Hardy has quite the following with him. We haven't seen or heard from Drew McIntyre after his run-in with Karrion Cross in Vegas. He was destroyed by the Dutch of Doomsday. Seth Rollins is no saint either. Leo Rush has been on the shelf with a head injury since last November. This group is quite dangerous to say the very least. And I have a feeling that they do not plan on stopping no time soon. As Hardy reaches for the microphone, what? Does the former IC champ have to say? Yeah, they are kind of dragging their feet. They usually have an announcement, but I'm pretty sure they have their reasons. Oh, come on. A little concussion? Concussions aren't something little that you play with. Oh, his rematch clause might be the least of his worries. Here comes the limitless one, Keith Lee. And boy, does he not look happy. Lee is walking with a purpose towards Hardy, but he's met with a roadblock in the form of Karrion Cross and Seth Rollins. I don't like the odds for Keith, but knowing him, he doesn't give a damn, and we have a fight on our hands either way. He's surveying the damage, and now he's taking a fight to Rollins as he flattens him, and he's in the face of Carrion, and now Cross is not backing down. You know, we have an impromptu brawl on our hands as Jeff Hardy is just watching as all this unfolds, and Lee, oh, Lee just laid out Cross. Lee just laid out Cross, and now Seth Rollins is sent into the barricade. Keith Lee is looking for payback for the past two weeks. Rollins calls him the IC Championship. And Lee was on the receiving end of a Saito suplex just last week as he continues the, the attack on Seth Rollins. And Ro oh my God! He just took his head off with that lariat. Wait, wait. Cross into the ring post face first. Cesaro is back. The champion is back as he sends Cross crashing into the barricade as Lee bounces back in his own right and takes care of Seth Rollins. Oh, what a stiff headbutt to the back. Both members of the order has been subdued at the moment. And I've been waiting for this. Cesaro won the IC title by overcoming the odds and now he wants payback. He wants revenge on the man who put him out of commission for two weeks with a concussion. And with Cross and Rollins out of the picture, Jeff Hardy is fair game. This is a powder keg ready to explode between the current champ and the former champ. And wait, what the, what the, who? It's Buddy Murphy. He just took out Cesaro. Oh, what a knife edge into the knee. Oh my God, is Buddy Murphy a member of the order? 
It appears that Buddy Murphy is the newest member of Jeff Hardy's order, and I can't believe it. Oh wait, Lee is back in. Lee, Keith Lee has Buddy Murphy. Spirit bomb! Hardy looks to get out of Orlando unscathed. Wait, oh my God! What did we just see? Keith Lee with a tope on Jeff Hardy. The order's mission has been subdued for the time being as I have breaking news from the office of the cabinet at the Royal Rumble in Tokyo, Japan. It will be Keith Lee versus Jeff Hardy versus Cesaro in a triple threat match for the IC title. Hardy now has two roadblocks on his quest to regain the IC title. Cesaro and Lee are foes when it comes to the title, but they have a common enemy in the order. Oh, what a night. Oh man, what a night it has been and next week is looking to be similar as Bobby Lashley will go one on one with his once ally in Tyler Breeze in a Royal Rumble qualifying match. With a bloodthirsty Big E lurking around, he better make this quick. Also his wish has been granted as Tommaso Ciampa will have the opportunity to qualify for the Rumble when he goes one on one with the rebellions Chad Gable. Also we saw part one of Finn Balor's road to the Royal Rumble next week. We see part two as his championship opportunity is vastly approaching. And then in the main event, this has been months in the making. Edge is back and he's gunning for revenge against the machine gun Carl Anderson when he locked both competitors inside of a steel cage. Pinfalls and submissions count only in this one. No escape for these two. And oh, oh wait a minute. The machine gun with his final statement before he steps inside of a steel cage with Edge next week as the road to the Royal Rumble continues. But that is next week's main event as this is your main event of this week's broadcast. And it is the final Royal Rumble qualifying match making his in-ring return for the WWE since August 2015. Wade Barrett has the opportunity to qualify for the Royal Rumble match, but like those before him throughout the night, he is at the disadvantage because he has no idea who his opponent will be. Barrett made his shocking return to the WWE Aiden and Team Rebellion, defeating Team WWE when he attacked Shane McMahon on his way to aid his brother-in-law, Triple H. We heard from Zelina Vega proclaiming that Alistair Black will be in the Royal Rumble match. Oh my God. I don't think though that proclamation will even matter and his chances just went to zero because a monster has awakened for the first time in months. The king of the jungle has returned. It's time for Braun and he is gunning for the Royal Rumble. Former United States champion, last year's King of the Ring winner, Braun Strowman is no stranger to success. But I have to ask, where has he been? We haven't seen him since Ground Zero last September when he was involved in that five-weight elimination match. Either way, Wade Barrett had better be ready because even with a new look, Strowman is just as dangerous as ever. My comment on him using his fist might hold more weight now because Strowman is without a doubt going to bring his fist 
to the dance. Wade Barrett is a former Intercontinental Champion and has held championships all over the world in various promotions. But I kind of don't like his odds. It's Baron and Stroman in final Rumble qualifier match of the evening. And here we go. Senior referee Mike Kyoto is your official for this main event. Many people would consider Barrett the white hand man. Oh, my God. Kick to the midsection to Stroman. Smart strategy. Take the bit man down early. But I think that might have just pissed off Wade Barrett. No win for a shot. But nope. Barrett's shoulder and took him down with a shoulder tackle. As I said, many people might consider Barrett the right-hand man to Daniel Bryan in the rebellion as he has done the bidding for Bryan when it comes to the, his ultimatums, aiding Zack Ryder in defeating Bryan Cage to win the TV championship last month. As, oh, my God. I'm saying all these accomplishments like Braun Strowman isn't trying to destroy the Englishman. We heard from Selena Vega earlier proclaiming that Aleister Black will be in the Royal Rumble match. And I can now confirm that is the case as management will not oppose that proclamation. Much to the dismay of pretty much everyone because he just got a bye without doing anything. And we might see Strowman do a lot to weigh Barry and send him crashing. Oh my God, yes he does with a shot to the midsection. It seems like Strum could put this one away anytime he wants to, but he is taking his precious time. Wade Barrett has is, has used used his bare knuckles before, but he might have to find a way to stop Strum's momentum as he sent them crashing halfway across the ring, and now he ain't done. Suplex, and he just plants him. Strowman is just tossing Wade Barrett around like a toy. Two, put this one away early. No, only a two. Barrett somehow staying in this fight. What a night it has been. It will now be a triple threat match for the IC title as Cesaro defends against Keith Lee and Jeff Hardy. Big E Langston and Baron Corbin have qualified for the Rumble. Rusev wants Daniel Bryan and The Rock at some point in time, which I can't wait to see, because that brute is one to be reckoned with as Strowman is brushing off these shots and laughing at Wade Perry. Oh, and the back elbow, he has the, the monster Rock. The king of the jungle is Rock. He missed with that shot, but he connected with this one, and he connected with another one. Oh, wait, but, oh my God, it's like every time Strowman, excuse me, Barrett has some form of offense. Strowman finds a way to just knock him down. Uh-oh. Backbreaker. Knee to the spine. Smart from Wade Barrett to roll out. We haven't seen Strowman since ground zero. And now, plants in the hard way. And now Strowman is looking to qualify for the Royal Rumble match. Oh, he, what is he going for? Oh, what a Samoan drop. Shades of his feud with Roman Reigns, whom we haven't seen since after Survivor Series. And Braun Strowman once again plants him. Now he's looking to put him to sleep. A very rare move that we see. Oh, Barrett just went limp. And now will that be enough? to put the limp body of Baron Corbin away and Strowman to qualify for the Rumble. That would be a no. We heard from Finn Balor. He is focused on becoming the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Strowman plants Barrett. The monster is on a roll and we all know what is coming next. He has that look in his eyes. We all know what's next, and that is the running power slam. Oh, wait a minute. Alistair Black making his way out here right now, and what is he doing? Oh, there she is, the Duchess of Fury, Zelina Vega, the woman who reveals she's been secretly involved with the rebellion all along. Mike Kyoto and Strowman are distracted. Strowman just brushing her off. But she has the official right where she wants him. Oh! 
Barrett with a low blow to Strowman. Jays will win Barrett helped Zack Ryder win the TV championship. And that was the plan. This was a setup. Oh, come on. Not this way. Not the ball hammer. Strowman is out. With the help of Black and Vega, Wade Barrett is going to the Royal Rumble. I'm sure Daniel Bryan is pleased wherever he is because now the representation of the Rebellion in the Royal Rumble has grown immensely. And despite a dominant showing, all it took was a low blow and a bull hammer to put the monster away long enough to score the win. The Harbinger and Duchess of Fury have gotten the job done and they will probably take their leave as they are witnessing their carnage. And yes, that is but that appears to be true. They will take their lead, but leave it to Wade Barrett to soak it in in the middle of the ring. He's going to the Royal Rumble. The field is getting more stars. Stud oh, oh, no. Wade, you might not want to turn around. There's a rapid monster lurking behind you. Running power slam. Stroma just laid out Barrett. Oh, what the? Black is back. What did he even... I thought he left. That appears to not be the case. We all know what's next. Shot to the back. Black Mass. With Alistair Black by their side and the loss of Rusev, the rebellion further proving the point that they are still a force to be reckoned with and there's nothing anyone can do about it. to whatever Bray Wyatt has in store. And a second AA to Bray Wyatt. And a second AA to Bray Wyatt. And a second, and a second, and a second, and a second, and a second.